the SR NAND flip-flop. The SR NAND flip-flop, or SR NAND latch, is the second circuit we will examine. This block diagram shows the SR NAND flip-flop has two inputs and two outputs. The inputs are labelled S for set and R for reset. Notice that the S and R inputs have a bar over the letters. This indicates that this is an SR NAND flip-flop. The outputs are labelled Q and Q0. Q0 is the inverse of Q. The SR NAND flip-flop is made from two NAND gates. The output of each of the NAND gates is connected back to the inputs of each opposite NAND gate. The truth table for this circuit is as follows. When we have a 0, 0 at S and R, the flip-flop is in invalid condition. We can't set and reset the device at the same time and this should not be used. When S is 0 and R is 1, the flip-flop is in set condition. This outputs Q to high and Q0 to low. When S is 1 and R is 0, the flip-flop is in reset condition. This outputs Q0 to high and Q to low. When S and R are set to 1, 1, Q and Q0 will remain in the same state. The flip-flop is in hold condition. Let's go over to the simulator to test the truth table. Here we have the SR NAND flip-flop set up in the simulator. An input switch has been added to the S and R inputs. A green LED to the Q output and a red LED to the Q0 output. When we start the simulation, the red LED is lit. The flip-flop has started in reset condition. Both inputs are at 1, 1, so the state will remain at this until changed. So let's input a 0 to set. The red LED goes off and the green LED turns on. Q is now set to high. The flip-flop is in set condition. If we now input a 1 on set, the green LED remains on. The flip-flop is now in no change condition and will remain in this state until the next change. If we now put the reset input to 0, the green LED turns off and the red LED turns on. The flip-flop is in reset condition. And now if we turn reset back to 1, the flip-flop remains in the reset condition. If we input a 0 on set and reset at the same time, then both Q and Q0 go high. It outputs an invalid state and should not be used. We can also use the waveform viewer to examine what condition the outputs are in. Here we can see the waveform for set, reset, Q and Q0. When we started the simulation, both set and reset were at 1. Q was at 0 and Q0 was 1. This was the condition when we turned the flip-flop on. We then changed set to zero 
and reset to 1, Q change to 1 and Q naught to 0. We set the flip flop. We then changed set back to 1 and with reset also at 1, the flip flop was in hold condition. Q and Q naught remain in the same state. The flip flop will hold the setting until a change is made. We then changed reset to 0, set is at 1, Q change to 0 and Q naught to 1. The flip flop was in reset condition. Finally we changed reset back to 1 to hold the circuit in its current state. Let's now go back to the simulator to look at a practical application for the SR NAND flip-flop. In this practical application, we will configure the flip-flop into bi-stable multi-vibrator mode, meaning that it will switch between the two states constantly. We will start with two NAND gates. We cross-couple the output of each NAND gate to make the flip-flop circuit. We then place two 500 nanofarad capacitors near the inputs of the NAND gate and two 1 kilo ohm resistors, one above and one below the flip-flop. We also need two NOT gates near the outputs of the NAND gate. At the outputs of the NOT gates, we will add two 100 ohm current limiting resistors and two LEDs, one green, one red. We connect the end of the lower capacitor to the lower NAND gate input and connect the other capacitor in the same way. The resistors connect into where the capacitor and NAND gate meet. The other end of the capacitors connect into the cross coupling of the flip-flop circuit. The other end of the resistors connect to the outputs of the NAND gate. The inputs of the NOT gate connect to the outputs of the NAND gate. We then connect the output of the NOT gates to the current limiting resistors which then connect to the LEDs and finally to the ground point. The circuit is now complete. When we run this in the simulator the LEDs will flash continuously. When the green LED is on, the red LED will be off and vice versa. The output will produce a steady clock pulse and the frequency can be changed by adjusting the values of the capacitors. By adjusting the capacitors, we can output a frequency between 1 Hz and 10 MHz. Let's go to the simulator to examine the working model. Here is the NAND gate flip-flop bi-stable circuit in the simulator. Let's begin the simulation and examine what happens. The simulation speed is set at 1 millisecond per second and the gate delay at 10 microseconds. We can see the two LEDs switch on and off alternately. We can pause the simulation and adjust the capacitor values to 200 nanofarads. When we begin again, we can see the difference in the speed of the output. Let's pause again and highlight the outputs of the NOT gates so we can see the signal on the waveform viewer. 
we will adjust the capacitors back to 500 nanofarads. When we play the simulation, we adjust each output onto a separate channel and can see clearly that both outputs are turning off and on alternately. Notice that the output is at 784 Hz. This clock generator circuit has many applications and is versatile in the fact that we can easily adjust the output frequency by adjusting the capacitors. A computer's central processing unit is controlled by steady clock input using this type of circuit. When you read the specifications on a computer, the CPU will have a clock speed. Modern computers have a clock speed of several gigahertz. The clock is the most vital part of the CPU as it drives the functions. If the clock goes wrong, everything goes wrong. 